Hey everyone, my name is Jay and today we're going to go over eight different types of data science interview questions with examples for each. The most common interview question that shows up is the behavioral interview question. These kinds of interview questions are meant to assess culture fit and also your communication skills as a data scientist. For example, one question that's really popular is to give an example of a time that you use data to drive business impact. So for this kind of question, almost always be sure to use the star format. This includes situation, task, actions, and results. This is a go-to for any kind of data science interview. For example, if we're targeting a situation, then we got to give some background. So pretend I'm interviewing for a marketing science role in data science. I would talk about how we needed to drive more impact in marketing analytics. Then the task would then be, what did we actually have to achieve? And so that would then be increasing the return on ad spend by let's say 10%. Then the action is actually the execution. What did I actually do? So let's say I dove into the project and did a deep analysis of customer attribution. And then the result is then what actually happened. And let's say that uh, after doing this analysis, I increased our marketing ad spend by 15%. So the result was even better. So overall, remember to use a STAR framework and you can use them on any kind of behavioral interview question. Some other example interview questions could be, tell me about a data science project you have worked on. What challenges do you experience? Another one would be, how have you used data to elevate the experience of a customer or stakeholder? I go deeper into the data science behavioral interview questions in this other video. Check it out in the description below. All right, the next most common kind of interview question in data science interviews is around machine learning. Now these questions can vary from just being around definitions of different kind of machine learning algorithms to actually going through a case study of how you would design and implement a machine learning algorithm in production. An example of an easier question would be, what are the assumptions of linear regression? For this kind of question, you need to know a lot of the actual workings of how linear regression works. And so the answer to this question is that Generally, we know that there has to be a linear relationship between the features and the response variable that you're trying to predict. Assumption of additivity means that the effect of changes of one of the features on the response variable does not depend on the values of other features. And then the third assumption is that the features are not correlated, such as collinearity or multicollinearity. Another kind of machine learning interview question is talking about the differences between two models. So for an example, what is the difference between XGBoost and the random forest model? So this one is one step up from the definition question because of the fact that it makes you list out the pros and cons of different kinds of models against each other. Lastly, the machine learning case study question is all about understanding how you can approach a problem using applied machine learning. For an example, I did an interview with Zadir where we went over how Facebook would build an algorithm to figure out if a Facebook marketplace listing was actually a firearm or not. You can check out that video and more about how we approach that case question and like the solution that Zadir proposed. All right, the next one is on A-B testing and experimentation. So most A-B testing and experimentation questions are gonna be around a case study as well. They'll show you some data and they'll ask you if this data is significant, or maybe they'll ask you about a case around A-B testing. For example, one super common question is, how would you approach designing an A-B test? How would you set up the experiment? And for this, you just have to apply a simple A-B testing framework. One, remember to set metrics. A good metric is simple and directly related to the goal at hand. Two is to construct thresholds. What degree does your key metric have to change for the experiment to be considered successful? Number three is on sample size and experiment length. How large of a group are we gonna test it on and for how long? And lastly, randomization and assignment. Who gets which version of the test and when? We need at least one control group and one variant group. As these questions get more difficult, they become a little bit more ambiguous in nature. And a more advanced question would be like, how would you make a control group for Instagram stories if you have to also account for network effects? So here we're dealing with a couple of issues. One is the fact that if you make a control group for Instagram stories, you are making a control group for either the viewer or the person who's actually posting. And so the difficulty in this is that a lot of these kinds of A-B testing interview questions can interact with other facets of data science. If you wanna check out an A-B testing mock interview, check out the one I did with Sandeep. There we went over an experiment detailing how you would run an A-B test when you're giving out different kinds of rewards. All right, a very similar question type to the A-B testing ones is also on statistics and these go hand in hand. But statistics questions generally lend themselves to more statistical concepts. For example, one really common question is, 
How would you explain what a p-value is to someone who's non-technical? And the reason why this question gets asked is because a lot of the time for data science interviews, they're expecting to hire a candidate that can explain all the technical concepts of data science to non-technical team members. And how we would answer this question is that first, we would give a definition of what the p-value represents, and then just give a simple example of when it would be okay to use the p-value and when it would be not okay to look at the p-value. Some additional questions could be around distributions as well and statistics. For example, what does it mean if a distribution is left skewed or right skewed. Then if we're looking at a more applied statistics question, a question would like that would be more like, what does the distribution look like of the average time spent watching YouTube per day? So there the, you, the interviewer will ask you to actually draw the distribution of what you think that average time spent on YouTube is and then explain why that's the case. Next up, we have data science SQL questions. Now SQL questions are probably the most common questions that you're gonna get as a data scientist or data analyst. Generally, this kind of just assesses your ability to pull data from a database so most of the time the questions that you're gonna get aren't gonna be as easy as like what's the difference between where and having and what's the difference between a left join and a right join even though these are extremely popular online please don't assume that you're gonna get these kinds of questions what actually happens is that in most data science SQL interview questions they'll give you one problem and if you solve it such as a case study around select the first row from this table then it gets increasingly more and more difficult then it'll be like select the count of the table then it'll be like join to the second table and then select the count and then it'll be like join to the second table and select the percentage that are actually you know that are not in the second table but are in the first table so best way to practice SQL interview questions is go to interview query and start from easy to hard and figure out which level you're on a couple examples so questions given the employees and departments table write a query to get the top three highest and employee salaries by department. So that's generally an easy question, but for a slightly harder question, you're looking at something like, let's say we want to build a naive recommender. We're given two tables, one table called friends with a user ID and a friend ID columns representing each user's friends, and another table called page lights with a user ID and page ID representing the page each user liked. Write a SQL query to create a metric to recommend pages to each user based on recommendations from their friends liked pages. So that one's already pretty complex, but that involves a couple of complex joins to then do subsequent joins onto the pages that the friends liked. Lastly, a super hard SQL question that you're not likely to see on the interview, but just to test your knowledge, is gonna be around creating a seven day streak. So this one is given a table with event logs, find the percentage of users that had at least one seven day streak of visiting the same URL. For this one, this is pretty complex. Um, I'd love for you guys to try it and see how you do, especially if you think you're good at SQL. Lastly, if you want to check out some more videos about of me solving SQL questions, uh, I have a bunch, uh, basically in the past of mock interviews that I've done with other users, as well as just direct problems that I've solved. So check out these videos, I'll link them in the description. All right, next up are Python interview questions. Now this is the second type of coding interview. So generally Python interview questions are gonna go over not so much leak code questions, unless you're interviewing for a machine learning engineer role, but more so questions around uh, general scripting. So stuff like, can you take a string and convert it to a list or can you take a bunch of strings and convert them into bigrams? Also, a lot of the times companies, especially companies like Google, like to integrate both statistics and probability into their Python questions. So they can test you both on your coding knowledge and also on your probability and statistics knowledge. For example, one common question is, write a function to generate n samples from a normal distribution and plot the histogram. So for this one, you have to know exactly what a normal distribution is for one, and then you also have to know what packages you can use to generate it. Another common kind of string manipulation question is given a dictionary consisting of many roots and sentences, write a function to stem all the words in the sentence with the root forming it. So obviously a really common natural language processing task that you have to do with data munging. Lastly, you might be expected to see a couple of algorithm questions in there and Python. So for example, write a function to list the pairs of friends with their corresponding timestamps of the friendship beginning and the time step of the friendship ending. So you're going to be given two dictionaries and you're going to have to match them up in an algorithm. All right, next up we got product and data analytics interview questions. Now these questions are generally reserved for more product analysts, data analyst types of roles, as you can tell by the meaning behind the words. A lot of these are also primarily case questions. 
So an example question could be, why do we care about segmenting users by active and non-active users in different analyses? So for this question, you have to understand exactly what an active user is, which is an active user that's going onto your website a lot, and a non-active user, basically a user that has churned, and why that's important for different kinds of analyses that you do. So that's like just an easy kind of facet of it, and that one's pretty obvious. But if we move it to the next kind of question in terms of difficulty, it'd be something like, average comments per user have dropped over a three month period despite consistent growth after a new launch. What metrics would you investigate? So here and now it's a completely layered kind of question. And specifically, I have kind of a framework that I use in the data science interview course that you can check out on interview query to solve this kind of question. But generally we start out with a four process framework. One is clarification, exactly what is happening here? What is this kind of website? When did we launch? How far is the decline? Is it very, uh, is it a significant de decline or is it non-significant decline? Number two is stating your assumptions. So these assumptions would then be, okay, I'm going to assume that the decline is by 5% month over month. And I'm also going to assume that there's no external events that are causing this. Number three is then setting up hypotheses, right? So our hypotheses could be that we're going to investigate a specific segment. So we're going to look at different device types, right? Is the decline happening in one device type or is it happening in all the device types? And number four is then defining metrics. So once I've had my hypotheses, I can then define metrics that I could use to prove my hypothesis. So that would be, let me cut the data by uh, declining users by device type and let me see if there's a difference between those. And so if there isn't a difference, then I know to investigate something else. A much harder version of this question, usually reserved for product managers or pretty experienced data scientists is gonna be around different kinds of metrics, increasing and decreasing. For example, a PM tells you that the weekly active user metric is up 5%, but email notification open rates are down 2%. What would you investigate to diagnose this problem? So here we have two different metrics moving in different directions. Again, if you guys want to check out more, please check out the product metrics course on interview query or check out some of these mock interview videos that I've done previously. The last most common question type is around probability. Now probability questions don't really change much from what you learned in high school to college to basically now as a data science interview. They're going to go over a couple similar types. For example, there's conceptual probability questions, basically just asking, you know, what's Bayes' theorem? Can you describe it to me? Can you explain a situation that you'd use it in? And then there's more case question based, right? Where we're basically given a scenario like rolling a dice or picking a card. We then actually have to come up with a probability answer. So for example, one kind of question like that would be compute the probability that you will get a pair from a hand of N cards. Another one would be how many coin flips does it take to get two heads in a row? And these questions, generally you just kind of have to study them and understand the fundamental nature of probability. So I'd suggest checking out the interview query course or checking out some more mock interviews that I've done in the past of these. All right, if you're still with me, thanks for watching the whole video. If you're preparing for a data science interview, I highly recommend checking out interview query. It was built for data science interview preparation. We have 500 plus interview questions along with our full data science interview course. If you had a data science interview recently, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what to expect if there's different types of interview questions that you saw there that aren't in this interview. And I hope to talk to all of you guys soon. See you later. Bye.